What's up? It's your man, Lukey. What's up? It's your man, Lukey. Zoom has a new function where it likes to talk when I start talking. And we are here with Richard Ortiz. Why is Richard Ortiz of the Fighter's Voice on? I swear I'm going to let him talk in a second. Is because he's been covering Jose Ramirez since the beginning of Jose Ramirez's career. Thank you, Richard, for coming on. Hey, my pleasure, Lukey. Thanks for having me on. I'm liking that we both got like microphones in front of us. That's pretty cool. Well, this is the, this is the era that we live in now. I mean, you've got to be mic'd up for everything. I mean, uh, sometimes when we're talking, people just don't pay attention or listen to us. Okay, well, tell tell people about the reinvention of the Fighters Voice show, some of the stuff you got going. I know this is a big week for your show. Jose Ramirez has really helped your show. So what what can people expect on your channel? Well, now, I mean, we have a new uh, day and time, and uh, we used to be on previously uh, Monday and Wednesdays, and it, it was really cutting it short. Now it's every Monday and every Wednesday, 6 o'clock, um, live, catch us on the YouTube channel, that's The Fighter's Voice, and what you could expect is entertainment at its finest, and when I say that, we, we do the best we can with what we have in front of us, and that's the living in the Zoom life. Uh, we do have a studio in progress and we're making attempts and every day that goes by to get in there to bring guests and in, in the studio because there's nothing like a live audience, a, a live studio. Uh, prior to that, we're making the best that we, we can do with what we have. And that's that life of Zoom. But long story short, um, our content is changing. I mean, it, it's more structured. Uh, we're now on Spotify uh, Apple, et cetera, because we want to hit as much as earways as possible. And again, if you're looking for up to date um, fight analogy, you know, this is probably not the show for you because when we bring our fighters on, we open it up so they can open up their, their selves and you can get a piece of their inside livelihood. We'll maybe talk about boxing, maybe 25% of it, but we will touch on all the uh, aspects that need to be hit on. But the main thing is every fighter has a voice and this platform is created for that voice. Richard, I've known you for a long time. Sorry, I don't have headphones because I love my headphones at my other house, but I'm just, I'm the host. So I get to make the rules for that stuff. So it's okay. Um, yes, sir. I've known you for a long time. You've always been a good guy with me and I wanted to bring you on because this is a big thing for you. This is a, this is a big moment. You started your career. We both were early in our careers covering the Tachi Palace fights, which for anyone that doesn't know, that's sitting out in front of a bunch of mosquitoes and you hope they don't have malaria or any other disease that you're going to take home to your that's family. Right. And you'd watch fights that were often not really that great. And then you get a couple of good fighters on there and you just keep plugging along knowing an opportunity would come. Now you've been there watching Jose fight from all the way interviewing him when he won the world title at the airport in the Fresno area. And now you'll be there fight week. Where do you, where has this journey covering Jose Ramirez? Like, what would you tell someone from the outside? Because I think a lot of America hasn't seen Jose the person or understand where Fresno is, Avenal is. Well, Jose is living proof of, of hard work pays off. And, and I, was, I know it sounds cliche because that's like the thing to say, but I've never seen him ever take, like, like when, whenever a, a football team, there's a certain player, he'll take a play playoff well, not not the playoffs but like he'll just like dog a play I've never seen Jose ever dog a workout his work ethic speaks for itself he's continued to rise and make big on every opportunity that that's come his way um the growth with Jose is is evident and everybody can see the growth the maturity but the sad part is and I will say the sad part is is is, is you said it yourself Avenal you know he's still that hometown hero and in order to get the exposure and the respect that he well deserves because of, of the work and time and energy that he gives to the sport and the respect, he's going to need to be victorious come this Saturday in Las Vegas. Sometimes living at home in a small town could be a curse. When I say a curse, it's because we have that small town mentality. But when you have a hard worker like Jose, he's definitely worldwide and global and should be a household name. Okay, so I'm going to kind of run with what you gave me there. But um, the one thing that I look at with Jose is there's been a lot of pressure on him throughout his career. So in the Olympics, he wasn't supposed to be the guy that went to the Olympics, right? He's this kid from a small right. town. Raynell Williams is there. Raynell was probably the guy that was a quote, unquote, favorite. Jose becomes the favorite. Then it's there's a guy named Felix Verdejo, who's now the OJ Simpson of boxing. 
he was in the same weight class, give or take Jose. And it's like, well, Jose's there, but there's other guys like Felix Verdejo. It's never been Jose. I've never heard the boxing collective outside of the people that covered him on a fight to fight basis, give Jose dignity and respect. And even leading into this fight, Josh Taylor, who has a very similar record to Jose, a lot of experts are kind of saying, well, this is Taylor's fight to win and Ramirez is much more limited. What's your perception going into this? Because I strongly disagree. I think Ramirez is the favorite in this fight, but I want to hear your perspective. Well, you know what? Jose is dealing with this um, as a professional. And we got to remember one thing. This isn't a mandatory. This isn't, okay, Jose, you have to fight this guy. You've been avoiding him. Okay, now you can't run anymore. You have to fight this guy. You got to remember, Jose's asked for this fight. He's looking forward to this fight. He's not dodging away from this fight. So being that said, you know your capabilities as a man. You know what you bring to the table. And what Jose is going to bring is dynamite. It's never, ever affected Jose's performance on what the odds are. Even when he's been the favorite in fights. He fights the same way, the same tenacity, the the same training camp and the same outlook and the same respect for his opponent. Although a lot of people are favoring um, Josh Taylor. I mean, you got to remember, I mean, he has a whole country behind him. I mean, he goes back to the UK. I mean, the numbers just, I mean, that that's, he has a career after boxing because of his following and because of what he stands for and his attempt to also uh, bring a legacy to his country. Being that said, Jose Ramirez will once again not only prevail, but make good on this opportunity. You know, when it comes to fighting for a belt, you've watched him. He becomes a different fighter, a different um, sort of animal. The lights go on and they stay on. And with this fight coming up, I had the uh, chance of, of visiting his training camp early and he has that look already. And that was maybe uh, three weeks out. And he just, it's just, he's, he's ready for this fight. All he wants to do is get the way in and get it on. I feel like I totally didn't take advantage of my connections for this fight, albeit I was busy, but like I've spent like a good chunk of my boxing professional career going to Jose's fights and I completely did not yes, yeah. bother them at all. But I also felt like this is such a big fight and I really believe Jose will win this fight that maybe this is a time when he just needs to be at peace because I know Eduardo Garcia is involved with this camp. Robert's involved. What I like for Jose, and I want to hear your perspective on this because you were there is the stability. Josh Taylor's having a lot of moving pieces. This is, I like Ben Davidson a lot. I think he's one of the best coaches in the game and I'm not even going to use that word young coach. I think just best coach, but this is their second fight together. As you know, Uh, you're a fan of Emmanuel Stewart, all these great coaches. Emmanuel Stewart can't coach everybody. You know what I mean? You can still be the best coach, but you can't coach everybody because your personality might not mix with somebody. Not everybody that knows boxing gets to come on the podcast because some people I just flat out don't like. I think (laughs) stability is really in favor of Jose Ramirez. What did you see in terms of the camp dynamic and what's going on in the camp? One thing we did talk about, I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Lukey. One, one thing we did talk about what was the team that he has surrounding him, the team that he has walking through the door. There's not a, a lot of yes men in his camp. There's strictly people that deserve to be there, that only need to be there. I mean, from his weight and strength uh, trainer. I don't even know what to call him because this, this man has many hats. Soon we'll be calling him Dr. Charles Trimley. And you got Robert Garcia, of course, who's going to be – a first ballot hall of famer when that time comes. And then you have the OG himself who's now involved in this camp. And that's uh, Robert's dad, G the OG. So he has a lot of say to it. And Jose brought him in there because he still has it. He still has that uh, boxing IQ and he can still see things and adjust things. Um, And on the management side, you already know his managers always constantly on the move and on the go. This camp, I, I do see that strong foundation. I do see the uh, the seriousness that's involved. And also, I do want to say some of the sparring with Mikey Garcia, uh, Virgil Ortiz, uh, these sparring partners that they're bringing it in, have all, they'll test your will constantly. Um, this camp is, is a lot different than other camps. 
when I say that it, it's because of what's at stake and what's still together and what's still together is that team, that foundation that he started with since day one. So what do you notice being in the Fresno area the week of the fight? Because the one thing I'm noticing is nationally, I'm not getting the same numbers on stuff on the internet just yet around the fight. You know, I'm not seeing people drawn to this fight as much as the Canelo fight or as much as a couple other fights. How is the fight being received in the Fresno market right now? Well, Luki, um, that's been a concern. And that's been something a lot of people, they're afraid to talk about that because they don't want to hurt feelings. They don't want to hurt feelings with the top ranks or the ESPNs that I, I think could have done a, a stronger job of promoting this fight. Um, we promote a lot of boxing. This fight, you can't just take for granted and say, okay, it promotes itself because it can promote itself. Actually, it, it has been promoting itself. A lot of things leading up to it could have taken place a little earlier. We, we recently had a Regis Pro Gray on, on the show, and he said, Richard, no one even knows this fight's going on. He goes, this is a big fight, and nobody's talking about it. This was the early part of May. Fresno thinks that, without a shadow of a doubt, that Jose is going to come home victorious. Now, they say that because of the support system. A lot of times they'll say that because they don't really don't know the opposition in front of him. You're, they're, they're your supporters, but your true boxing fan knows knows that Josh Taylor didn't come all the way down here to sit down in the middle of the ring and open up his legs and say, okay, dive in, take it away. No, he's come here to win the fight. He's come here with his whole team. He's bringing everything that he has. And I'll even say the kitchen sink. So Fresno does have the support system and always will for Jose Ramirez because they believe in, in what he does inside and outside of the ring and what he's given back. Saturday, everybody in Fresno will be tuned in to support Jose Ramirez. I'm grateful and thankful that this fight is available for the, the boxing fan and the non-boxing fan. So it's going to be a great event. And as far as what's going on, the energy there, it, it, it's kind of calm. I mean, there is advertisement here and there. You talk to the average boxing fan, and of course, they're pulling for Jose. And you talk to the real boxing fan, they want to get their butts down there. And that's another thing. These tickets, man. From day one, people were asking me. I mean, when I bump into people, they think I just carry this stuff in my back pocket and I just give it away all the time. It doesn't work that way. I let a lot of people know, hey, tickets are going available. They're going to be on sale soon. So once I got that email, I let everybody know. And your average Joe was not able to come home with a ticket. And we're talking about the true supporters, the true fight for the waters, the true I'm going to make a sponsorship, the true I'm going to do whatever it takes to get to Jose's fight when I'm unable to purchase a ticket. Now, I know some were available afterwards, but the cost and, and able to get those, that was a hot, that, that's, a, that's, that's a tough one right there because there, there was only so many tickets given away. And, and of course, you know, um, the promoters got theirs, the, um, the hotel got theirs, and the UK got theirs, Jose's people got, got his, and he could only give away so many or contribute. So as far as the support system, our people, when I say our people, I'm talking about the Jose Ramirez's people, we're ready to go down to Las Vegas, purchase a ticket and go support. That's how much they believe in their champion. So I'm very grateful that it is going to be available for them on ESPN Top Ranked Boxing Presents. So I hope I answered your question, man. I mean, you asked me about what's going on there, and, and that's the feel that, that I'm getting here in Fresno. Okay, that perfectly answers it. And I also want to say that I think part of the issue, too, is that this is a smaller venue. You know, this is a big yeah. fight that is bringing in fans from the UK. It's bringing in a lot of People uh, disrespect the middle of California, the Valley of California, but there's a lot of people, especially farm workers and Mexican families who really resonate with Jose Ramirez's yes. story that are first or second generation Amer Mexican Americans who are trying to change their life. And Jose really, really speaks to them. And I think that that is an undercurrent that I do wish that it was in a 10 or a 20 or a 40,000 seat arena, because there's a lot of people that I think, even if they couldn't see the fight, wish that they could be there. You know what? I, I made my reservations at the MGM Grand thinking it was going to be in the MGM, MGM Grand bubble because of, 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 of this magnitude of the fight. And I started thinking, now, did this fight get overlooked because of the, the previous matches we had in May? It shouldn't have. And I don't believe the fight itself will come um, the first bell once the bell rings. But I just, I just think 
we could have done better. When I say we, that's everybody as a whole together as far as I think the media dropped fight. the ball, man. I really think the I think I think that a lot of boxing media is dropping the ball. I'm included. You're probably including this. But a lot of people are doing these stupid things about negotiations and is Canelo and Caleb look, Canelo and Caleb Plant aren't fighting until September. I love Caleb Plant, one of my favorite fighters. Canelo is a great fighter too. Who cares what's going on with them until at least a month from now? When they when they're really like we don't need to hear about that negotiation. We don't need to hear about this. The problem is, and this is my opinion, there's too many people that enjoy the politics and the business of boxing, but they hate the actual sport. They find the sport boring, but they like to be able to talk with people and gossip with people about the negotiations, but they flat out don't like this sport. Not only that, you left out, they flat out don't know shit about boxing. Well, I think that's a given, but thank you for getting my back on that. Yeah, no, I know where you're going with that. A absolutely. And, you know, it's kind of like when we post things, we don't want to post anything that just gets overshadowed. We, we do it accordingly, Luki, because it, it deserves the exposure that it needs to, uh, to get. Unless there's breaking news, of course. You, you put that in any, any time during a fight week. I'm not going to start putting up anything that's going to distract what needs to be uh, looked upon, and that's the big fight coming up. I had said that um, come week of – I was going to go uh, top heavy with Jose Ramirez. Uh, some of my posts, I even got some flack on some of my posts, to be honest with you, Luki. I, I promoted a lot of, uh, um, of Josh Taylor. I put him on there, you know, because as media, we don't want to be recognized as one dimensional. Yes, I'm from the same town, the same area as Jose Ramirez, but boxing is worldwide. Boxing is, is global. And in order to be respected, in order to have a, a great take on the sport of boxing, you got to be open to the other half of the world, the other side of the world, and the opponent that stands in front of them. So being that said, I think we all could have done better. Like for me to say, okay, well, ESPN should have done better, or top rank, the correct word is, the correct way to say is we, us, all together as one, could have done a better job promoting this fight. I've called it recently, good. I called it recently the biggest little fight that nobody knows about. And when I say little, I'm not talking about uh, the event, I'm talking about their size. I think that's my frustration with this fight right now is this is the fight I have circled in my calendar. This is the fight I will not miss. This upcoming weekend is my most exciting weekend of sports that I've had where I can lay in bed because it's, it's uh, what they call a major. It's one of four big golf tournaments this weekend. And we got Jose yeah. Ramirez. So I can sit and lay on my bed the whole Saturday. I can do it the whole Sunday. It's perfect. All I have to do is go to the gym and get a lift in. And if you talk to most boxing websites, they haven't even gotten to any promotion of this fight yet. And that just tells me if this is just a week of fight, a world title unification against the number one and number two guy in the division, people just don't care. People don't care. If this doesn't excite them, I don't know what does. Two Olympians, two undefeated Olympians, two fighters in their prime of their career. And I know I'm sounding like Rick Morrigan right now, his promoter. Two fighters that whole uh, even portion of the titles is going to leave home with all four. And one fighter is going to leave home with, with his first professional loss. There's a lot on stake here. And yet we're not giving it the recognition that it needs, the exposure. A week of, I know we're all going to tune in because boxing fans are going to tune in. But this is something that absolutely should have been marked, highlighted on their, their calendar. On, and they they're, want to call themselves a boxing analyst and sports media they definitely need to tune into this fight. Let me, I'm going to go on Lukey rant. Sorry, Rich. Okay, I'm going to go lose it. it. I'm going to lose go it. Okay. It. Here's, here's <clears throat> what bothers me about this fight is I feel like outside of our little bubble and everything, the majority of the boxing fans think Jose sucks. And this is going to just be a uh, Josh Taylor is going to go in there and win all four belts. And sure. It looks good on record, but we don't think Jose is good. And the issue is Jose's really good. And because I've spent so much time around him, I kind of take it personal because I get this cocky, arrogant undertone where people are just flat out disrespecting Jose. And they're kind of acting like I'm just going to tune in and watch Josh Taylor win. And that's the, that's the undertone that I'm feeling from the general public. And if you go against that thought, well, you're an idiot. Let me call you names. Let me, let me say this. Let me say that. And that's what I'm feeling. And I only can imagine what Jose is feeling and using as fuel for his motivation right now. Luke, can I be honest with you? Can I be 100 with you? Shoot it. 
Because if I don't, I'm going to look back at this, this opportunity right here and, and say, you know what, I, I should have said this when, when Lukey brought this up and I should, and I know the reason why, or I can at least <clears throat> let people know the reason why a lot of people don't care for Jose. And, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to call it like, like it is. I may get a text message. I may get an email. I may get a, Hey, you know what? We're no longer friends. We're no longer acquaintances. A lot of people don't care for Jose. And I'm going to be honest with you. It's because of his management team. Jose's not the one sending out the text messages. Jose's not the one on um, Instagram. Jose's not the one on Twitter putting people down and saying I'm the best around and, and, and being funny, but at the same time, irritating people. That's not Jose Ramirez. But a lot of people will take a sour note to that because of the stuff that's being posted in behalf of Jose Ramirez, that's affiliated with Jose Ramirez, that's connected to Jose Ramirez. Does it bring them exposure? It brings them, but what it does, it brings hatred because people don't want to hear that. They're in a place, a certain people, they'll love it and like it. You know why? Because they got balls in their mouth. They're afraid to speak up because they're going to get cut off of a free ticket. They're going to get cut off of, of be, and having the opportunity to meet Jose. And the other half who don't care, say, you know what? I don't need any of that stuff. To, I don't need to hear anything because the fight's already made. I don't need to hear one quote wonders or something. It's fun, funny for a while, and it's kind of cool. But what it does, it, I've always said this, don't wake up a sleeping giant. Let him sleep. I don't want to piss off Josh Taylor or his team. They're already going to show up. They're already pissed off. They're already focused, and they're already professional. Jose doesn't need all that other stuff that comes with it. That's not Jose. That's not who he stands for. That's not what he's all about. He's all about professionalism, and he does his talking inside of the ring. So well, I think I you know, know what, 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 I'm, what I'm talking about, but it, it, it can have an effect, and it could persuade fans from disliking Jose. I could see how that could possibly it. That's not what I'm kind of going at. What I'm going at is on the way up, I feel like there was a sentiment amongst hardcore boxing fans that Jose wasn't going to be a special fighter, that he was kind of created, that he fought a lot of local guys. He, he was carefully matched. He got his WBC title. And then as he continues to win and became a capital G guy, it's like, well, this, this rodeo is going to end one day and then enter the guy from the UK. And you know how boxing fans love fighters where you just can't see them easily whether it's in a way, Josh Taylor, you make it hard for a boxing fan to see their fights and they're three levels above, they're three spots above someone on a pound for pound list. They're going to be ahead of the guy that you've seen his whole career because it's just harder and they're smarter for seeing it. So I think also what I'm looking at is this is a comparison of the modern boxing fan in America. You got the kind of hip, obscure i like the the my personal kind of like a rap or a music artist this is my obscure artist that only i know about but i'll let you see it just a little bit but he's way better than your ice cube album that's been impacting <laughs> culture for a decade right so taylor's that to a lot of boxing fans and they're like well we've never believed in ramirez that's the undertone i get from a lot of boxing fans and this is our guy He's he's been fighting these guys. I watched him on bootleg channels. He moves like Sergio Martinez. And that's when I say that he's not getting his respect is I think that there is an, um, a degree of people not believing that Jose is what he is. Well, going into this fight, Jose is already down around. You, you know this on the scorecards. I mean, I think that's the mindset to have. Yeah, I, I think so. And I think the mindset is also is to, to remain focused and control. Although I do think he needs to fight the whole fight like it's the 12th round. Being that said, that's the round Team Ramirez needs to avoid, Lukey. Okay, we're now entering the 12th and final round. Team Ramirez needs to avoid the 12th and final round. They have a game plan. They need to win and, and execute that game plan within the 12 rounds to be successful. I truly don't believe that that fight goes the distance that Jose Ramirez will get the nod. I've watched I mean, boxing. I, I've I'm watched not going to say long. that because I don't believe in like conspiracies really. Like I'm not a big conspiracy person. I think that if the fight happens the way either guy, as long as the fight's not close, because here's the issue with close fights. I never think it's a conspiracy. I think that most judges just don't know what they're watching. 
So it's like you just you don't know what you're going to get if it's a close fight. Like they don't know what they're seeing. Well, until we correct that problem, I mean, these judges still have a seat and these judges are continuing to judge and these judges are continuing to get paid. Being in Las Vegas, it may be out of their control. I'm not saying it's, it's any network or any promotion. Sometimes we don't have control over this. The but only I'm control. just saying, who wants to be a hall monitor, right? Who wants right. to who wants to right. enforce a rule in a boxing match? We're showing up because we kind of want to see a fist fight. We don't want to re- enforce the regulation system. So the people that are drawn to that, you're dealing with a different type of person. And that person might not watch a boxing match like a regular person. Well, in every boxing match that takes place, the less the ref does, the better. That means these guys are going at it. I mean, he doesn't have to get in there, break them or initiate any rules or fouls or any of the above. And, you know, um, that's something that I'm expecting. I, I'm, I just, I don't, I, you know, that's just me from, from experience. But at the same time, I'm going in there positive. I'm going in there knowing that this, were, this fight that's going to be seen by the whole world is going to be right up the middle, man. I mean, it's going to be a chess match. And we haven't got into detail or, or, or the keys to victory, but I see it as a chess match. I don't see any man taking over right from the start. I don't see a man winning uh, two Give or three rounds in a row. Victory. Let's do the Richard Ortiz fighter's voice. Three things for each fighter. Josh Taylor. What does Josh Taylor need to do to be successful in this fight? Josh Taylor needs to be active. Josh Taylor needs to be Josh Taylor from the Southpaw stance. Continue to let his hands go. Believe in himself. Continue to every now and then stand his ground, move around, stay off the ropes, and don't let Jose double up on, on those body shots. Move him around, give him angles, pop shot him, uh, the jab, stay away from him, stay off the ropes completely. But at the same time, get Jose's respect by every now and then standing your ground. But don't don't sit there too long. I mean, you got to pull a Sugar Ray. What Sugar Ray Leonard did to Marvin Hagler, stay off the ropes. I mean, that, that's just plain and simple. Stay off the ropes. When you're on the ropes, Jose goes to work. And what does Jose need to do? What are his three paths to victory? Well, first of all, he has to apply that pressure. Cut that ring off. When I say cut that ring off and stop the movement from Josh Taylor, he has great movement. And what a lot of people don't want to give Josh Taylor credit for, even though he did get a little tired against Reese Pro Gray, but he finished strong like a champion. He continues to let his hands go. And, and his stamina is there. And I believe he's a lot stronger than people uh, give him credit for Jose Ramirez has to cut the ring off, make it Jose's fight, bang to the body, hit the hips, hit the arms, whatever it takes to slow him down. Because the second half of the fight, it's go time. When I say go time, that's all Ramirez. That is the game plan of Jose Ramirez and his team. Second half of the fight, we're entering the sixth round. Let them hands go. The man's hurt. We put the work in as far as the body shots. Now it's time to get him out of there. What do you look at Josh Taylor? When you look at Josh Taylor, what type of fighter do you see? And what's your expectation of Josh Taylor? Josh Taylor kind of reminds me a little bit of, um, I want to say, uh, like the power in the jab, uh, like, like, a, like a, not quite as a, swift, but a, a Michael Nunn. Not, not quite the head okay. movement, but just the way he put his hands together offensively. Kind, kind of almost like, like, like a slap. And I'm not saying a slap. That's just part of his technique. You know, we say it's a slap. A lot of people, you know, he, you can't fix muscle memory from a fighter. It's kind of like just the reminds Joe Calzaghe school of punching. Hey, Joe Calzaghe, you know, somebody recently posted something and they posted it with uh, some of the light heavyweights. And I, I picked Josh, uh, um, Joe Calzaghe to, to, to win that tournament. And that was, uh, there was some big names in there. That, that guy's one heck of a, a boxer puncher. Well, that guy was also one heck of a volume puncher. Like that Absolutely. was a guy who could turn you and use volume as his friend. And he is a heck of a fighter. The biggest thing about Josh Taylor, I think his legs are his biggest attribute. I think that that's what makes him a world-class fighter is his ability to move and his footwork. Very, but probably because he came out of the same school, but it kind of reminds me of a Carl Frampton. Carl Frampton meets... Uh, Sergio Martinez is kind of my assessment of Josh Taylor early on. Is that your comparison to Jose Sergio Martinez? No, uh, Jose Jose Ramirez, I think, is Chavez Sr. And I think that <laughs> Josh Taylor... A little bit of Del Hoya, a little bit of Del Hoya at times, I think. I, to me, you can tell Jose Ramirez watched a lot of Chavez Sr. growing yeah. up. Like, when yeah. you watch him, the 
it's it's very eerie for me. We just don't love our fighters the same way, but he is the closest thing I've seen to Chavez Sr. since Chavez Sr. I, I, I agree. I, I agree with that. Um, and, and also, Jose uh, needs to not let him off the hook once he has him hurt. And I, I think both men are going to take a pop, and it's just uh, – I, I want to see – the corner is going to be a big um, toll on this fight. When I say toll, who makes the adjustment? Who, who remains calm? I mean, there's a lot going on. They're going to face a lot of adversity because Jose's just not going to go in there and have his way off the start. And Josh Taylor isn't going to um, be able to uh, move forward constantly when, when a man is pressuring you. There's going to be mixed rounds. Even if someone Absolutely. goes up 3-0, there's going to be adversity checkpoints because even if you get – if Taylor – like I think most people are expecting Taylor to go up two or three rounds to start the fight. But Jose is going to be inching forward. What if Ta- what if Jose wins the first two and then Taylor starts boxing, picks up the third? These are things that I'm curious about. I go back to the fact that Taylor, even though Ben Davidson is a really good trainer, their relationship is rather new. And I'm really looking you. at that because they haven't even been in the corner for one fight yet. Because his fight with Ben Davidson, he knocked the guy out in one round. They haven't gone back to the corner as a team yet. They don't know the structure in the fight. Now, Ben Davidson's so good, he could probably win a fight without having that. But I'm saying Robert Garcia and Big G, Eduardo Garcia in the corner, that's a lot of experience, dude. That's a lot of experience that's very confident in what they've done. They've experienced the good and the bad of the sport. And no matter what, they've seen it. You know what? The corners, they don't get a lot of credit. And I'm going to go back without, I'm not mentioning a lot of names, but I mean, I'm watching some of these prize fights and just some of the, the, uh, <clears throat> the words that the corner is giving their fighter, you got to knock them out to win. You got, we got to knock them out to win. You're blowing it, kid. You're blowing it. Or, Hey, you got to let your hands go. You got a dead man in front of you. These are all from the famous trainers in order to hear that and receive that, that comes with trust that comes with working together. So I'm with you on that, that, that relationship is, is fairly new very new and i know jose trusts his corner and will go and adapt to what his corner and trust what his corner is, is giving him the information my whole thing is these rounds are going to be they're going to be tough and i can see a fighter winning two rounds in a row and the fighter that want that's up two rounds takes a knockdown so how do you score it and it's going to be very close there's going to be some close rounds and but i believe the action is going to pick up in the second half of the fight i really do we're we're you're going to question a man's will and, and, and find out there if the fight's going the distance. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. Now I'm going to ask <clears> you the thousand dollar trip question. What okay. do you, because I mean, that's probably the total number for the trip is probably we're going to budget that about thousand dollars. So <laughs> that's why this is a thousand dollar question. Maybe 1500 is um, what is, I'm not going to eat the whole time. You're not going <laughs> to eat the whole hey, I'd be eating a little bit. So you already know I'd yeah. be, I'd probably run it up a little bit, but um, yeah. How do you, what is your Richard Ortiz, the fighter's voice, official prediction of this fight? Well, when it's all said and done, man, it's going to live up to all the expectation. A lot of people are going to want to see this again. A lot of people are going to be screaming for a rematch um, from, from either side. I do see, of course, Jose Ramirez coming home with all four belts. And in being open to a rematch, giving Josh Taylor a rematch. That being said, that happening a lot easier if it was the other way around. Um, it's been a big event leading up for both men. Both men deserve a, a break. But at the same time, you got to make good of that uh, window of opportunity. I don't see a reason why Jose does not win this fight. Um, Las Vegas odds doesn't mean anything. Las Vegas odds isn't the one waking up in the morning and jogging and running around. That's from some ignorant people. They're going to write down some odds so some betters can come in. That's all what that is. This should be a pick em fight right down the middle. But I do have Jose winning the fight. Do I see Jose uh, possibly behind after four rounds? Yes, I do. I, I really do. Do I see Jose making the transition after the fourth round? Yes, I do. Stepping it up, hurting him, applying the pressure, and then it's a, it's a slow timber before that tree falls down. I don't see a, a, a KO, but I do see a TKO stoppage for Team Ramirez and yeah. going into maybe the eighth or ninth. Okay. I mean, I just, I see Jose winning this fight. I don't see Jose losing this type of fight. And then before we get you out of here, 
we got to ask we're hypothetical matchmaker Lukey. You already know top sure. rank has better matchmakers than matchmaker Lukey. They got Brad Goodman and Bruce Trampler. So those guys are a little bit more decorated than matchmaker. Two of the best in the world. Yeah. Well, I, think I, they, I, 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 I do. I do like uh, Roberto Diaz too. But I, I, I think that, yeah, Robert Diaz, a golden boy is pretty awesome as well. Um, do we think Teofimo Lopez at 140? Do we think Rugi Ru? My man Rugi, does Rugi get a shot, maybe? Or do they move up and try to go for Terrence Crawford? Or is Crawford out of the picture? He leaves the company, and the winner of this fighter fight becomes a centerpiece of top rank at the welterweight marquee division. The winner of this fight is going to take on Regis Rigaru Pro Gray. Plain and simple, period. Too much money on the table. That fight's easy to be made. Regis just wants to get paid. That rematch is going to be there for him and Josh Taylor. That long-awaited fight is going to be there for him and Ramirez. There, he's already been contacted. He will be there at the fight. He's already been contacted. So he, he's, he's waiting and, and he's ready to go. Uh, Diafimo Lopez, there's not going to be any interest in that right now. That, that benefits Diafimo. These guys don't need that right now. Regis Pro Gray will be the mandatory. He is going to step in, and that fight is going to take place. So look for the winner to take on two mega fights. So Regis, I, I do feel – this is one thing that I do feel. Josh Taylor and Jose Ramirez are very, like, mellow, humble personalities. Like, And don't get me wrong. Jose is the kind of guy where he likes to drive a car fast and then get into a ring. Like, I imagine him driving his – car as fast as possible getting to the ring beating up someone as fast as possible in the ring and then leaving but he's very humble in the process of doing all that macho stuff taylor i assume is the uk version a guy like rugi regis uh he's more of like a showman to the extent where if he was in one of these fights i do think more people would be talking because regis uses his social media more than either of these guys like josh taylor when he used his social media he made claims about covid19 without being a scientist that many people found undesirable or un unhelpful like i'm not necessarily going to give comments on either but i do think if you're a boxer leaving scientific issues might be a something where you just defer on it probably the same as religion like if you got a hot take on religion and you fight in the entertainment industry maybe just leave that one to yourself and family and friends but I do think this fight suffers from the fact that there's not a clear entertainer in terms of the social media markets like a Regis. You probably answered the question when, when uh, the media has asked, why didn't they get the exposure wanted needed for this fight? And they're probably thinking, well, it, one, they're going to turn around and say this fight promotes itself. Number two, anything Regis Pro Gray is involved in brings exposure excitement and entertainment. I mean, he opened on his social media, he opens up to everybody where you can see a piece of him and his family and just the antics uh, of the man being crazy about life. He is a great um, ambassador to the sport. He has uh, promoted himself since day one. He's in a great position right now. He's a free agent. He's, he's actually, and I'm going to use the words that he calls him. He, he calls himself a money bag. And that's exactly what he is right now. <laughs> And he says that in that New Orleans accent. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you if you never met Regis or seen him and you just hear you just have a conversation with him on the phone. And when you do see him, it's going to be tough putting two and two together. Well, I just I like Regis because he's so like his fighting style is so violent and aggressive. But when you meet him, he's one of the most humble and normal oh, people cool. I've ever met. Like, I was just like, oh, that's it. Because, like, I remember I was introduced to him by one of Jose Ramirez's sponsors. I'm like, oh, I want to interview uh, Regis. And they go, oh, shoot, that's super easy. Regis, come over here. My boy wants to interview you. And I'm like, wait, that's Jose's guy. And they're like, no, he's, he's super cool. <laughs> and that's just Regis. It's like everyone that interacts with Regis seems to have a great experience, and he seems to light up their, light, light up their day. Well, I mean, he's the one who does things like um, for Christmas, gives his mom the keys to, to her new house that he just bought her. Um, has fun with his kids, doing crazy things. I mean, chasing alligators, uh, you know, going in the swamp with, uh, uh, you know, these crocodiles, swimming with great whites. And, um, yeah, he's, he's crazy about life. And also a, a great acting debut. 
don't know if you got to see him in some of the movies and uh, you know, he's just loving life. So what does he bring to the table? He brings entertainment and he brings dollars and he brings numbers. So he will be, uh, I like to put the word mandatory, but mandatory created by the fans because that's the fight we all want to see. Well, I think, and, and he's, and he, and he's ready for that. He wants that. And I think like when you look at a Taylor and a Ramirez, these are pure sportsmen. Regis is a sportsman, but he's also a sportsman slash entertainer. Like I could see him doing WWF or something down the road. Like he, he's a personality, whereas a Jose is, I'm very serious. I'm going to train in a dark room for hours on end, and I'm going to show up the night of the fight. But there's going to be pure – Jose's from the 90s, right? He's from – you shoot a commercial. I train in solitude. I show up. You're excited to see me. The world isn't that world anymore, but that's who he is. Terrence Crawford, Jose Ramirez, these are guys from another era that are just happening to live here. Regis is a fighter who is of this generation. I think that's also why when he fights, there's a little bit more excitement. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I will add, Jose is a very educated man. A lot of people, well, he never gets to really uh, stand out in that era, but, but if you speak to him, he's a very well-educated man educated man and has a future and in, in, I, I say politics after boxing but he's very thoughtful that's my big takeaway if you ask yeah. jose the right questions he'll give you a very thoughtful and sincere answer and he's one of the few fighters where he sits for a second on a question and really thinks about it before he answers it because i remember i was there before the Amiri mom fight and it almost tripped me out because I almost thought I used a word in English that maybe he didn't know, but he was thinking for a second, like deeply on the answer. And then he gave me this long answer. And I was like, wow, that's pretty powerful. I even said it to him. That's pretty powerful, Jose, because it was just it was very like he really took time, thought about it and then unpacked it for the interview. And most of the times boxers just kind of give you kind of the Jack Kerouac experience where it's just off the cuff. This is what I'm going to give you. And there's not always the most substance when Jose wants to give you something with substance. I'd say he's a, a top five interview because he really puts his heart into his words, like the way he fights. Uh, absolutely. And uh, his fists, actually, they, they do the talking. He's never really been vocal, but I will add when, when these guys, um, see each other for the first time I, I look for uh team taylor to be very vocal okay well richard where can people follow you on your show uh you got it changing up this is a big week for your site so you can get a lot of exposure because this is one of your marquee fighters you've been covering since the beginning where can people follow all your work this week Go to our YouTube channel, The Fighters Voice, www.youtube.com slash The Fighters Voice. Follow us on Instagram at The Fighters Voice. Follow us on Twitter, Fighters Voice underscore. For content, for interviews, which we're going to be releasing and re-releasing and putting together some of these cool videos from all the standout segments. And look for one of uh, our, our boy Regis Pro Gray doing his best impersonation of Jose Ramirez and his take on the Jose Ramirez-Josh Taylor fight. Man, I'm, I actually want to see Regis impersonate Jose. That, that. <laughs> he did. He came, on, he came on the show and, and uh, he, he did his best. And I asked him, I said, what was that? So he continued to, yeah, and went on without giving much away. Uh, he did a great job. He did a good job. Very good job of, of mimicking the way Jose talks and, and his hand movements and his mannerism. Man, I bet Jose hates him. <laughs> Jose is a professional. Jose has a... Uh, uh some business in front of him and then he'll move on to uh regis okay well we That's look forward to all the content you will be providing people and thank you for taking time for us richard absolutely and uh again look for us to go live on our youtube channel in las vegas uh, we'll be um arriving there wednesday and uh, we'll be posting some some uh, cool things up that wednesday night uh thursday and leading up to the fight great thank you